Good morning. On behalf of St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Holgate, we welcome you to worship this morning. Just a couple things that you'll notice different today. Um, I've been meeting with the confirmation students each Wednesday night by Zoom. And so last week we recorded portions of the service. So they were in their homes and we were recording and then we've put that together for today's service. So things may look a little different, but we thank our confirmation class for their willingness to try something new today. The words and responses will be printed on the screen, and so I encourage you, wherever you are, to join together as we worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all of the world, for he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Stephen was one of the seven, seven men chosen by the apostles to serve tables, so that the apostles could be free to serve the word. Stephen does more than distribute food, however, for his preaching of God's words. He becomes the first martyr of the faith, a reading from Acts, the seventh chapter. Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God in Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears with a, and with a loud shout, all, all rushed to get together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he said the when he said this, he died. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name. Lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my power of strength. In your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Christ is the cornerstone of God's saving work and the foundation of our lives. We are God's chosen holy people who continuously celebrate and declare the mercy of God we appearance we experience through Jesus Christ. A reading from First Peter, the second chapter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it, you may grow into salvation. If needed, you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let, your, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, and they destiny to but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation god's own people and 
order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have had not, you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not believe, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise this day. It's a day that we can gather for worship wherever we are. It's a day we can hear your word spoken to us. It's a day that we remember women who are nurturers and caregivers, women who are mothers, women who want to be mothers, women who mother other people's children. We give you thanks that you bring us together into this community of faith, that wherever we are, we know that you are indeed with us. And for that, we give you thanks and praise. And so now we pray your spirit of peace as you open your word to us this day. We pray this in Jesus' name, and together we say, Amen. Well, when I was a young parent, my mother warned me about the cost of grounding as a form of punishment. You ground a child and you, the parent, are the ones stuck in the house with them. It's our human nature that we don't like to be told what to do. We don't want someone to tell us to stay home. We don't want someone to tell us to wear a face mask. We don't want to be told what direction to walk up and down the aisles at the grocery store. Now, politics aside, science is showing us how to stay safe, but we don't want to believe. We see the facts and figures and we try to twist them into something that someone else is using to control us. We know people are dying, but not in the numbers that were predicted. So instead of celebrating that our sheltering in place and other precautions are working, we hear cries of conspiracy. People are trying to take away our rights and tell us what to do. We are bombarded with news media and Facebook posts of people who claim to have the answers. And in today's Gospel reading, Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and then we will be satisfied. Let's look at the context. It was that first Monday, Thursday. Jesus had washed the feet of the disciples. Jesus had taken his Passover meal with them and changed it into something new. 
These disciples had been celebrating the Passover since the day they were born. It was something they knew the words inside and out. It was the tradition that they held dear. They knew what was to come. And instead, Jesus takes the bread and the wine of Passover, and he gives them communion for the very first time. Jesus also predicted that one of them would betray him. He foreshadowed his suffering and his death on the cross. The mood must have been solemn. The anxiety level in the room had been very high. And what does Jesus say? Jesus says these familiar words, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. I can almost hear Thomas say, nah, -uh. we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Or one of those emoticons that I tend to use a lot these days is the one where the gal has her hand face planted, or planted on her face, I should say. And I think Jesus must have used that good face plant at a moment. After all, he'd been with his disciples for years, three years. Thomas dropped everything to follow Jesus. He must have known there was something special about Jesus to give up everything. He saw Jesus heal people. He saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. He saw Jesus feed thousands of people. They ate together, traveled together, played together for three years. And Thomas is the one who would later demand to see Jesus' wounded hands in his side. And Thomas is the one who speaks up. But Jesus, ever patient, reminds him, I am the way and the truth and the life. If you know me, you will know my Father also. But now Philip wants proof. Show us, he says, and then we will be satisfied. Now look carefully. Philip has switched to that infamous we, when he really means me. And Jesus again ever so patiently responds, If you don't believe, then look at the proof. Look at the miracles you have witnessed. Look at the empirical evidence. Now there's a story about a drowning man, and I'm not sure who originally wrote it, but it's, it works here. A fellow was stuck on a roof in a flood, and he was praying to God for help. And soon the rowboat came by, and the fellow shouted to the man on the roof, Jump in, I can save you. To which the stranded fellow shouted back, No, it's okay, I'm praying to God, and God is going to save me. So the rowboat went on. Then a motorboat came by, and the person in the motorboat shouts to the man on the roof and says, jump in, I can save you. And the stranded man shouts, no thanks, I'm praying to God and God's going to save me. I have faith. So the motorboat went on. Then a helicopter comes by, and the pilot shouts down, grab this rope and I'll lift you to safety. To which the, the stranded man replied, no thanks, I'm praying to God, and God's going to save me because I have faith. So the helicopter reluctantly flies away. Well, soon the water rises above the rooftop, the man drowns, he goes to heaven, and he finally gets his chance to have this conversation with God. At which he exclaims, I had faith in you, God, but you didn't save me. You let me drown. I don't understand why. To which God replies, I sent you a rowboat, and a motorboat, and a helicopter. What more did you expect? Well, how many times are we like Thomas and Philip and the drowning man? How many times has God offered us a gift, a way out, an opportunity that we miss because it doesn't meet our expectations, our wants, our plans? But Jesus raises the stakes here. Jesus tells them that not only will we do works, but those who believe will do works greater works because Jesus is going to the Father. He says, I will do whatever you ask in my name 
so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So that the Father may be glorified. That is what we are called to do. Everything we do, everything we say, should be to glorify our God of hope. And that's what this gospel reading is all about. It's about hope. Hope that comes through trusting in Jesus, even in those times we do not see God at work in our lives and in the world. And as we keep trusting Jesus, as we keep believing that Jesus has our backs, our eyes are more open to his workings around us in the world. This reading today is also about assurance, that there is a place for us in the Father's house, and that gives us hope not only for this day, not only for this COVID crisis period, but hope for all eternity. So this week, instead of worry or fear or anxiety, trust. Trust that you and Jesus are more powerful together than anything in the world, more powerful than the devil and more powerful than death. Amen. Let us join together now as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, Mother and God, as living stones united in your spiritual house, continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for the new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, including volcanoes, oceans, ocean currents, tropical rainforests, rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens, especially those we name at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise in your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into da dan dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Just as he said, go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. Alleluia. Alleluia.